a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, every high priest is taken from among men and made their representative before God to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal patiently with the ignorant and erring, for he himself is beset by weakness, and so, for this reason, must make sin offerings for himself as well as for the people. No one takes this honor upon himself, but only when called by God, just as Aaron was. In the same way, it was not Christ who glorified himself in becoming high priest, but rather the one who said to him, you are my son, this day I have begotten you. Just as he says in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days when he was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered, and when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. The scepter of your power the Lord will stretch forth from Zion. Rule in the midst of your enemies. Yours is princely power in the day of your birth, in holy splendor, before the day star, like the dew, I have begotten you. The Lord has sworn, and he will not repent. You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. reflections and thoughts of the Dominos vobiscum. Lexio Sancti Evangelii secundum Marcum. The disciples of John and of the Pharisees were accustomed to fast. People came to Jesus and objected. Why do the disciples of John and the disciples of the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? Jesus answered them, Can the wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them? 
As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast on that day. No one sews a piece of unshrunken cloth to an old cloak. If he does, its fullness pulls away, the new from the old, and the tear gets worse. Likewise, no one pours new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skins, and, the, and both the wine and the skins are ruined. Rather, new wine is poured into fresh wineskins. Verbum Domini. The letter to the Hebrews, the first reading, was most likely written before the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem. The intention of the author was to demonstrate that faith in Christ is the culmination and perfection of the faith of Israel. The author wanted to demonstrate that Jesus Christ is greater than Moses. Moses was considered a mediator, a bridge between God and man. Hebrews, the letter to the Hebrews asserts that Jesus Christ is a mediator, the bridge between God and men. Moses pointed to what Jesus Christ came to establish. Jesus Christ is always the fulfillment their perfection. The letter to the Hebrews says, Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. This statement in the letter to the Hebrews was controversial in the very first centuries of Christianity. How could Christ who is God the Son, learn obedience from what he suffered? And how could God be made perfect? Was he not perfect before as God? The word used for perfect is telos in Greek, meaning end or purpose. And let's be clear, Jesus Christ, God the Son, was always perfect in himself. He always obeyed the Father, always listened and acted upon the Father's command. Christ was always morally perfect in his actions and in his life. But it was not until Christ takes on everyone's sin and expiates it through his suffering that he accomplishes the goal for which he was sent. In other words, Christ was sent to take on our sins. He who was sinless, the spotless immaculate one, the immaculate lamb, in order to reconcile us to God, to become the bridge between God and men the one mediator. This was the telos of Christ, his purpose, his end. No human person could offer perfect atonement for sin. This was precisely why each year on the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, that sacrifices were offered by the high priest for themselves and for the entire priestly class and also for the entire people of Israel who would come on pilgrimage to Jerusalem once a year for that occasion. They did this each year precisely because they knew that their sacrifices were imperfect. They needed to do this again and offer themselves back to God 
to be reconciled to God. Again, they knew that no human person could make perfect satisfaction for sin, not even the high priest in the temple or the priestly class. Only God could. Only a divine person could bridge the gap. The one who, to accomplish this was God the Son, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Only the God-man could take the sins of every human person that ever lived and ever will live upon himself and make perfect atonement, perfect satisfaction for sin, become the perfect offering. This is why we say that Jesus Christ is both priest and victim. In temple sacrifices, the priest and sacrifices were obviously separate. The priest being himself, the offering being that which is offered. They were separate. The letter to the Hebrews tries to explain to the early Christian community that Jesus Christ is both priest and victim. He is the priest who offers and he is the offering at the same time. This is what makes Christianity completely different than any other religion. Jesus Christ as God, as a divine person, is the priest, the one who offers, and the one who is being offered. It was Christ's suffering that made him obedient to the Father and he stays obedient to the Father. He shows us that he is the priest. He is the mediator that brings about reconciliation between God and men. Christ was always obedient. He didn't learn obedience for himself, for he is God. And this is important. He didn't learn obedient for himself. Who did he learn it for? He learned it for us. He learned obedience for us, the ones for whom he came to save. He learns obedience in a similar way to the way that he became perfect through suffering. His obedience was not yet complete until he put it into practice through experience, through offering his life. And this should be very consoling for us as Christians, as followers of Christ, for any sort of trial that we may go through during this life. That we have a God that fully identifies with us, with the human condition. We have a God that has perfect knowledge of the human condition, the fallen human condition, that he came to redeem, that he knows us, that he sees us, that should be very consoling, that we have a God that sees the human condition for what it is, and he wants to dive right into that, a God who dives right into the, the very depths of suffering, a God who, as Fulton Sheen says, took his own medicine, the medicine of suffering. The primary role of Christ's life on earth is victim, that of a victim. He learns obedience and becomes perfect in suffering by taking all people unto himself. Again, every person on the face of the earth and every person that ever will live, Christ identifies with. He knows. He knows you. He sees you. He learns obedience and becomes perfect in suffering by taking all people, you, by taking you, by knowing you. He becomes the offering that is pleasing and acceptable to God. The author to the Hebrews links Christ's perfection in his passion with our salvation. Christ's transformation 
and being made perfect through his passion was not just for himself, but it has consequences for us, for you and for me. This is a prayer in the letter to the Hebrews. Christ's prayer in verse 7 was answered. In the days when he was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save himself from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. This is what makes Christ's priesthood unique, totally unique. The old covenant high priest was a sinner himself, offering gifts and sacrifices to atone for sin. Jesus Christ, the new and eternal high priest, not only offers gifts and sacrifices, but he himself becomes the sacrifice. The priest offers himself. He is the spotless and pure offering that forgives sin. As we say in the Roman canon during the Eucharistic prayer, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim. The truth of the priesthood of Jesus is profound. Again, it's unlike, unlike anything that you will see in any other religion on the face of the earth. It is the truth, the one truth. Before Christ, the Jewish priesthood is only a shadow, foreshadowing. Only in Christ do we see its value. Only in Christ do we see its perfection, its fulfillment. The letter to the Hebrews says beautifully, Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all those that obey him. 